Hello, friends. I have a major update and a major correction for one of the stories we covered recently. It's a tragedy that happened in Redmond, Washington. I'm horrified about this story, and I told you we would continue to cover it. I told you I'd continue to give you updates. I was contacted by somebody who claimed to be a family member of the recently departed, of the victim, and... I'm not saying they're not. I just don't have any way, any fast way to correct that, to uh, check into that. But what I can do is correct this story because they brought to my attention that the story that I covered, although the story was correct, the person, the victim, Zora Zarehi, Zarehi, was not the picture, was not the video of the woman that I showed course we got intel we got it early from these other news sources reporting on what was being reported and they reported it incorrectly i believe i did get it from the new york post they've since corrected it and they added to it and i'm going to do the same I'm gonna let you guys know exactly what's going on here uh for those of you that don't know what i'm talking about her name is zora zarehi her and her husband their life was taken by a stalker who first became interested in her because of her podcast. Now, her podcast was on Clubhouse. And what it did is it helped Farsi-speaking people. From my research, they're from uh, Tehran, Iran. And she helped them get jobs in the uh, computer engineering sector, which is what she did, what her and her husband did. Her husband was a lead software engineer at Amazon, and she was a computer uh, programming engineer herself. She was going to the University of Washington for her her PhD. She didn't get to finish. So what she did is she did podcasts on Farsi speaking people uh, how to of how to get jobs in the sector of computer engineering. And one of the people that were listening to her podcast took um, took an interest in her. First, as reported, as is reported, it, the relationship started out cordial, and then he just wanted more and went too far to the point that he was showing up at her house. As soon as her husband stepped away to go to work, he showed up with flowers for her. She didn't take them. This got scarier and scarier to the point March 3rd, she she had a protective order. That's not very long ago. The protective order did not work. Let me tell you the story. Let me back it up for all of you guys. Right here. Vulgar angry stalker. This is from the New York Post. Had left 20 messages a day for the husband before the murder suicide. Let me play the initial video of this that I played on the last the initial uh, reporting on this. Thank you. As you mentioned off the top, we're following some breaking news out of Redmond this morning where three people are dead in an apparent stalking incident. Fox 13's China Green is there. And China, what can you tell us about this case? Well, I can tell you this is an absolutely tragic morning for anyone involved, for everyone here uh, who have kind of got the rundown of what happened here this morning. But again, it has been confirmed that three people died here this morning. So officers were dispatched to this house here behind me, just past the tape you could see uh, at around 2 a.m. This is located on 89th Street in Redmond. We're told the woman who called 911 called from a neighbor's house, said this was a stalker situation, like you said. Now we're told four shots were fired. When officers arrived, they found a 35-year-old man, the husband of the household, laying in the front yard there who had been shot in the chest. They tried to save his life. He ultimately died. When officers got inside the home, they found his 33-year-old wife and the 38-year-old suspect who were both dead from gunshot wounds. Redmond PD tells us that suspect broke into the home, broke into a window to get in. We're told the suspect did all the shooting here. So he shot the husband, shot the wife who he'd been stalking, and then turned the gun on himself. Now, the man had been stalking the victim for some time now from what we have been told. Uh, The 
However, investigators were not able to, she did file a no contract restraining order against him. However, investigators had yet to serve him that because we were told that he was a truck driver and, and he was just always out of the area. Uh, but the woman who escaped here that we mentioned here earlier today, we're told that it was the mother of the wife who was killed here. Now there was some sort of altercation between her and the suspect who ultimately shot himself. Uh, but again, this is an absolutely tragic morning here um, and this is going to be a long investigation as they try to figure out why this all started but we're in redmond right now china green foster horrible terrifying the thought that somebody can be on social media to help to help people what was she getting from helping farsi speaking people to get jobs in the tech industry what did she have to gain from it other than to give back to her community disturbing all right he was a Texas trucker. Left 20 messages a day just for the husband. Okay, I'm not going to go over everything that was reported in the news. But it, the podcaster, Zora, said that two messages she received late last month were vulgar, angry, and threatening. It goes on. Uh, She said that he had bursts of anger. His delusions made her fear for her life and the lives of her loved ones. She wrote that in her petition for the protection order. She first told him to leave her alone on November 6, 2022. According to the protection order, throughout November, December, he continued to call her from various numbers, including from nearby hotels, nearby hotels, nearby, near her. This is what he looks like, what he looked like. He also looks to be of Iranian descent. Truck driver from Texas. Zora Sadeghi. So sad. Her husband's name was Mohammed Nazri. So today he blocked all private callers in an effort to discourage the stalker, according to the outlet. The protection order also stated that Sadehi recently had back surgery, which limited her mobility and made her feel fearful about being able to respond to a crisis. Again, her mother was in the home at the time. Her mother escaped, although she did have an altercation with the suspect. She wrote, all this caused me great distress and pain, and now I'm suffering from a deep-seated fear for my own safety. It's taken a toll on my recovery, she wrote. I haven't been able to open the curtains in my bedroom out of fear of him being outside watching me. There she is. May she rest in peace. Giving back to her community. Supporting her community. This happened to her and her husband. I'm telling you. This is her husband, by the way. On December 20th, 2022, the perpetrator, he arrived at the couple's home to deliver flowers after Nazri left, prompting Sadehi to call the police who also collected a scarf he gave her last month as evidence, according to the report. In the petition for the protection order, today he wrote, he has bursts of anger and is completely delusional. These delusions made her fear for her safety and the lives of her loved ones. Early Friday morning, the crazed fan climbed through a window of the couple's suburban home in Redmond, about 15 miles east of Seattle, an open fire, killing Sadehi and Nezri before turning the gun on himself. Sadehi's mother, who was also at the home, managed to escape to a neighbor's house to call police. Again, she was a doctoral student. She wasn't a doctor yet. The lady I reported on before I showed videos, that is not the same lady, and I hope she's doing fine. It was misreported, and I misreported on that. For that, I am sorry. I'm correcting it right now. I stand corrected. I'd like to thank her family. 
for contacting me so I can straighten this out. Um, I'm going to continue to cover this if there's anything new to cover. There's been a lot of talk of protection orders, how protection orders don't do anything. So when the officers arrived, they found Nazri lying on the front lawn with a gunshot wound to his chest. They gave him CPR, but he was pronounced dead at the scene. Today, he and the perpetrator were found dead inside the home. The assailant died of a self-inflicted gunshot wound after he'd been stalking the podcaster for many months. I think this is beyond terrifying to me. I'm telling you, it's beyond terrifying to me. Wow. First of all, how easy it is, if somebody knows where you live, what city you live in, and they have your name, they can have your address. Know that. So it's not that she gave this man her address, but again, if you have somebody's name, You have her name, you have the name of the husband, and you know they're in Redmond, Virginia. You can look up their address. You can get their phone numbers. You can get their close associates. Unfortunately, that's the way things work nowadays. That is the way it is, and that is what happened. He found them. Since I've been on the Internet, I've ran into some very mentally unstable people. I have. Matter of fact, just a uh, couple days ago, when I first reported on this case, I, I had the picture of the lady who I thought was Zora. Zore, that's how you pronounce it. Um, I was threatened to take it down because the family might not like it. The family contacted me with her picture, the correct one. But I was threatened. I'm telling you, there's mentally unstable people on the internet. So it's not just podcasters. It is anybody with a Facebook account. It's anybody with a YouTube account. It is... I'm talking about subscribers. I'm talking about podcast subscribers that are active in the community. If somebody has your real name, they know what city you live in, then you can be a target. So just know that. I want everybody to be safe. So that's an update. If you have any more information for me regarding this case, maybe I missed something, or you just want to let me know how you feel about this, I am mortified. I'm mortified. Phone number is 325-261-0892. 325-261-0892. Leave a voicemail message or send a text. I will get it. 325-261-0892. Maybe I'd like to send an email. That is midnightrad.io101 at gmail.com. That is midnightrad.io101 at gmail.com. Thank you very much. All my best.